Okay, so I guess uh, without further ado, we'll kind of hop into Zone Battle, take a little bit of a look at it before we hop into our first games. And uh, Chris, we've been kind of going through some questions about the mode, and uh, mm -hmm. I think we are getting a better understanding of it. But uh, yeah, for the players or the uh, viewers out there that might not be as familiar with it, we'll get a quick run through. And uh, yeah, you know, plus just exploring it before we go into the competition itself. Right. It'll be just nice to see some of those mechanics uh, in a format where you can kind of see what's going on. Because when our actual pro players start playing, everything is going to be happening so fast. Uh, it's going to be hard to keep up. And uh, even for just for myself to be able to commentate on it, having it kind of like presented in such a way that it's like, okay, I can see that, you know, here's back-to-back T-spin -back setups. Or mm -hmm. here's, here's how you uh, start a zone and then build... A uh, really big line clear out of that, yeah, uh, and, and those mechanics. So, yeah, so I'll kind of play through down. it. I'll try my best not to embarrass myself here, and uh, you know, be able to do what uh, show some of the features of Zone Battle. Um, so, yeah, let's get this started. I'm just going to play against an AI. We I thought about playing against uh, my friend Green Tea, but he's a little busy with the stream, so we're just gonna. Yeah, yeah, the Green Tea is running the um, <laughs> the Japanese language stream. Yeah. Uh, I think they have other commentators. I think uh, Yamamoto and Shuto are are the um, commentators, but Green Tea is actually running yeah. the stream, so that, that's a lot of work, and uh, we really uh, got to thank him for that. Yeah, between you, you and me, Chris, the main reason I wanted to uh, have Green Tea be part of the demo is so I could sneak in a few games against him because I never get the chance to play him. <laughs> that's a uh, deep yeah. down inside. Uh, I mean, I... everybody wants to see him play, so <laughs> yeah. you know, being the one to play him has got to be extra special. So. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe uh maybe on one of the other days this isn't the only day we're doing tetris effect connected stuff so right okay we're gonna put ai level five apparently it's good but we'll see we'll see what i can do here um so okay and you can also get All a right. look at how our stencil might look here today how the uh, game will be projected when the games are going yeah off, so. yeah no it looks it looks really great um great presentation you can um uh, Something about the CTWC format where we have, you know, the, the player cameras featuring them front and center, and then you have the gameplay in the middle. Um, it's what we can add uh, to what's already a great looking game. It looks like, okay, so it looks like you're building. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm building right now, but okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, so when you start off a zone battle match, you are in phase one, right? So... When you kick off a zone battle game, every part of the zone battle match has a different phase. So uh, we're going go to kind of go into that a little bit. So I, I believe uh, phase one goes until 20,000 points. Score you can see on the bottom left or bottom right of each uh, player grid there. And uh, you can kind of gauge when you're going to go into the next phases. And the phases will alter the... Uh, the computer just beat me, unfortunately. But it will alter the... <laughs> uh, how quickly your zone meter depletes, as well as um, the messiness of the garbage. So it, you'll see as these matches play out today, we're gonna have plenty of games to uh, go through. Uh, you'll you'll see that play out, and the phases are very important. And uh, how you lead into each phase can really get you an advantage. Right, and um, the phase is determined by whoever crosses the score threshold first puts both players into that next phase right so if you um if you are a player that is pretty keen and good at looking at the opponent's screen or not the opponent's screen but other areas on the board you'll keep tabs on the score and leading into other phases you can uh, take advantage by popping your zone right before the phase starts because um, if you pop your zone in phase one and you go into phase two you get the bonuses of the phase one zone because it doesn't deplete as quickly if that makes sense you see where i'm going with that chris <laughs> so so you can you could do a bigger you have more send. yeah you have more time to get a bigger line of send because you are mm -hmm. on the phase one zone so if you time that before phase two you can make it so that your opponent has a phase two zone if that were to make sense so there's a lot happening right. and so, yeah yeah you'll have you'll have the <laughs> advantage going in just from the timing right uh, and if they're not prepared to uh their zone then um they'll be at a slight disadvantage so however when you um when your line sends go over there if you're in phase two will it be messier garbage then um 
Yes. So phase two is like standard uh, what people expect when they play versus Tetris. Uh, if you are familiar with a guideline or modern games in recent years. Um, mm. When you play. Yeah. So phase two is like a mix. It's like a 50% chance you'll have clean garbage and 50% chance will be messy. So you'll have to improvise depending on which garbage you accept in uh, phase two, which is from 20,000 points to 60,000 points. Mm hmm. Uh, this computer is not so twenty thousand and sixty thousand are the two <laughs> score thresholds that that are the ones that, to remember. Uh, correct, correct. Uh, I feel like sixty thousand is more important because, uh, well, arguably because phase three, the messy garbage is like pure mess. It's just every row is shifted, so you have mm -hmm. to have a good position going into phase three, or you don't have to. You can show some great survivability and get a nice combo or something like that to kind of. There's a comeback mechanic in phase three. Uh, it can be very tough, but you'll see it from the best players. Um, but yeah, you want to have a good board leading into phase three because you do not want to be the first to start with that messy garbage, and it gives you the control, right. and you can just create your own attacks. So if you are an efficient player, which means you have the ability to create more attacks with less lines, um, that will help if you're pressuring an opponent into phase three. Mm -hmm. um, and we were discussing earlier about what kinds of line clears to do how uh, in phase one making tetris is, is most effective because it builds your zone meter uh, by doing line clears line clears being the mechanic that gives you the zone meter mm -hmm. uh, but in phase three you want to do things like t-spins because they're more efficient right uh you could technically still try to get uh more zone meter by farming tetrises in phase three but ideally you want that efficiency because you don't you don't want to accept any lines at all right uh in phase one mm -hmm. you're okay with accepting lines because look at my well right now we're in phase right, one right counter... now it's straight Tetris wells, so yeah. you want to you want to employ speed in this early part of the game, whereas later on mm -hmm. you want to employ that those efficient finds, which you'll see some pretty creative play from players today in that phase. Cool. Okay, so you're in zone now. Mm -hmm. You pop zone. Let's see what you can build here. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> I got a little <laughs> cut off here. That. Yeah, uh, gonna have to settle. You're hungry for uh, a curb tris, but you're gonna have to eat the hexadecimal. So <laughs> this is a good IRS <laughs> example. So see how I I was holding the left rotate. So this is how you get these huge combos up at the top of the board, right? It's mm -hmm. called the initial rotation system. If you're holding a button before the piece spawns, you can pre-rotate it. So oh. uh, that's how you're able to get these curb trace combos. And it helps with survivability too, right? So the fact that I was able to get that long bar in that gap will add some lines to my combo as well. Uh, that computer just couldn't handle that, even though I was talking to you the whole time. So it just shows the strength of IRS. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think it's funny that they call it IRS. <laughs> yeah, initial rotation system, IRS. Yeah. Oh yeah, the uh, not to be confused with uh, the tax service here in the United <laughs> States. But... All right. I never did make that connection. Or <laughs> or the pro wrestler. <laughs> oh yeah. Nice comeback, Shen. Thank you, chat. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Chris, you have anything in particular that you'd like to uh, be shown on display? Any concepts that we have kind of gone over? Um, let's see. Getting... I mean, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be seeing in the tournament might come more into play in the later phases, but that, that might not be that easy to demonstrate here. Yeah, um, I could turn up the difficult. I'll, I'll do some uh, more in-depth games or like games. I mean, that are you, if games. you want to <laughs> go straight into what we were talking about earlier and just set up something like a curb tris or something by setting the AI at a, like a lower level and then okay, and then trying yeah, to. I'll, I'll go for one right now. Um, okay. Oh no, I won't. Look, the computer's not good enough here. <laughs> yeah, they but die uh, too yeah. fast. That, that's probably no good either. So we'll, we'll turn up the AI level a little bit and see if I can uh, at least get a twenty. Uh, I think we'll have a good chance to see him some curb traces today, especially from our first game, which is between Yoshimi and Bubbles, which will be up in about 20 minutes. So Yoshimi Bubbles, if you're around, get ready. Get your nerves out, out of your system. Uh, I expect your the fingers. best. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, both players are very adept at getting large combos and getting the uh, 21 uh, line clears. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed that we get to see that here in the, our uh, first match of the day. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that. Okay. Let me turn off the difficulty before I waste my time. And all right, let's turn it to nine. That should be... <clears throat> so 
So if you're intentionally going for one, is it better to set up um, something in uh, like a like a center well, four wide or um, something? Is that is that the preferred? Strategy? Yeah, absolutely. As we saw in that uh, in the Game Scout video, we saw Kirby going for a four wide. That is one way to do it. Four wide isn't uh, the greatest strategy starting off in zone battles. You're not going to see people intentionally going for these center four wides very often. Um, but it, it is an option. I think uh, you can you can kind of artificially create a board as well, but typically you're just going to kind of go with a flow, and if you see something, uh, you try to adapt to it, or if you see an opportunity. Um, I guess the rule of thumb for getting a 21 is you want to uh, have a high left and right and try to uh, create a solve in the... Oh, I topped out on accident. You want to create a solve oh my in goodness. the middle. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a common top out. If you're being greedy, trying to get high, and then, uh, you know... You'll have that. I said I wanted to try not to embarrass myself, but we already just did. There, there, there it was. <laughs> well, you know, that's just a testament <laughs> to uh, these setups don't just happen on their own. You know, there's a certain amount of risk involved and uh, things like that can happen. So right. uh, why not demonstrate uh, that yeah, aspect I, 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 of... That was, an intention that was intentional. I was just trying to demonstrate what can happen when things go wrong. Uh, I would never do that in an actual game. I see. Okay, so a nice T-spin there. It looks like you're setting up for some line clears to build that zone meter as a T-spin. Right. CPU pop zone. CPU. Trying to catch me off guard with this uh, quick zone. So there are <laughs> opportunities where you want to... Typically, player, it's like the safe thing is to kind of wait until you have max zone, right? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, what am I doing? Um, but uh, if you see an opportunity, you can definitely... Uh, pop it sooner. Try not to die again. <laughs> CPU is up for blood. Yeah, it's more like I'm uh, trying to do two things at once here, which I should have expected. There we go. Just <laughs> we uh, turn up the speed a little bit. Tetris, <laughs> Tetris mind control helmet. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. That's the future. When uh, Tetris effect gets ported to a, you know. The mindset in uh, 30 years. I'll be <laughs> you excited. know that it'll be one of the first games that they're going to try to do that for. All right, so we'll see what I can do with this. Oh, and CPU pop zone again. CPU with a 17. It looks like you've got more. Let's see. Close. Got a 19. I was trying to gun for, there was a 20 option there. But regardless, uh, those combos can be devastating in the right moments um, by uh, certain players. So something to watch for in today's games. But it looks like we might be able to get to the uh, later phases that I wanted to explain earlier. So we'll see if I can try to artificially get to the phase three, which starts at 60,000 points. Okay. Oh, I almost did the same mistake. <laughs> you know what it is, is I'm playing without game sound right now. Oh. oh, I should probably turn on the game sound, big enough. But uh, game sound is uh, something that is pretty important as a player because you hear sound effects for when you're about to accept garbage and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so. when I'm playing and I hear my <laughs> opponent uh, pop zone, I just start playing a lot faster mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, I better I better uh, get yeah, my zone meter panic. charged and, and counter that. Yeah. I think any good Tetris game that's versus is going to have... Um, that sort of mechanic where right. you would even need to look at the screen to kind of know where you're at in terms of just listening to what your opponent is doing. So we're almost in that, uh, that phase three. Yeah. 52,000 points. You're ahead by score. So mm -hmm. trying to throw down some T spins and it'll help us get there quicker. <laughs> I just want to top out the AI. So in terms of building score, um, is there a difference between zone or is there a difference between T spins and Tetrises? Great question. Cause uh, they actually are worth the, or worth the same amount of points. It's just a matter okay. of uh, the line efficiency, right? Line efficiency. Cause T spins clear two at once and a Tetris clears four at once. Right. So, so uh, if you're trying to get points, but not lines, then T spins are better. But if you're also trying to build your zone meter, then Tetrises are better. Yeah. And if you're trying to pressure your opponent in certain situations, T spins can do it quicker. Right. Uh, you just have to because it takes less drops to get mm -hmm. 
more material scent. So as you briefly saw from that phase three garbage, it was pure mess, pure cheese. Uh, that's what they call it is cheesy garbage is when it's like shifted mm-hmm. garbage uh, left and right. So, so that's uh, that's what phase three attacks look like. It's every other line is the garbage hole is in a different uh, column. Right. And that makes it harder. harder. So, OK, so just a, a brief synopsis of how today is going to play out. We're going to have uh, all first of five matches. And with zone battle, a match, if it's close, it can last a really long time. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how this plays out because uh, the match variance in time is kind of hard to predict. Uh, it can be over very quickly if you're playing somebody like Kazu <laughs> or, you know, if you have a, a close matchup, um, it could last up to sometimes 10 minutes. I've uh, The longest game I've had has been like just over 10 minutes, which is, you know, when you're playing that game, it gets pretty intense. But I don't think we'll yeah, have too much I, of that today. When I said that this game's stressful, that's kind of what I meant, <laughs> because when I play zone battle and I'm just like trying to play and I'm trying to play at some point, it drags on and on. And I'm like why aren't you dead? Right. And then I'm like, why am I not dead? And then you just keep going and you're like, somebody please die. Even if it's just me. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how long our matches are going to go on in, in terms of, um, you know, surviving um, 10 plus minutes, but right. I, uh, I don't think if we have one of those games, it'll be really cool and kind of, you know, out of place, but yeah, um, I mean, it'll, it'll be exciting yeah. for sure. <laughs> We do, we do have some pretty close matchups today, so it, it will be fun. It'll be fun to see. And uh, hopefully you guys aren't too bored of watching me play right now, but we're, uh, we'll be hopping to our games shortly. Um, I guess one thing I could showcase is... Uh, kind of gone through phases. Uh, speed is really important in some parts of the game, like I said, in phase one. Right. So... Uh, Right, because you want to build zone meter as fast as possible. That's right. pretty much basic. So making making lines and then, you know, making them Tetrises, the game freezes every time you make a line clear. So being efficient in terms of doing four at once instead of one or two right. builds that zone meter faster. So uh, is there any reason for someone to want to um, increase the level more so than their zone meter? Like maybe they can be building up for popping their zone yeah so uh, on on phase three instead of phase two correct yeah you could uh typically people will try to pop their zone like right going into phase three they'll keep an eye like right. around 58 59k you might try to sneak in the zone because sometimes your player will tease another player will t-spin and not really be wary and then they'll kick in the phase three right so there are some strategies there um typically though that's the move you want to go for um but not not always. You could try to you know pressure your opponent going into phase three, and then if you have a confident board that you know you can get down quickly, regardless, um, it's not. Yeah, you you really there's multiple situations, and you just have to take uh, the read in each scenario and decide what's best. Yeah, I'm actually kind of since the phase mechanic is actually such a big part of the game, I'm surprised there isn't like more um, in game of Sun. It's like seems like something like. High player levels know about it and they use it, but it's mm-hmm. not like um, it doesn't. There's no like sign that says you're now in phase two or you're now in phase three. Uh, like there, there is a brief, there is a small sign. It's, you hear a little ding. It's yeah, like a, I, I know about the ding, ring, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I, I hear I know about the ding, but it's just that for someone who's just like learning the game, like the, I, I thought there would be something a little more more a little more emphasis put on that, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that's why we're talking about it now yeah. <laughs> to bring more attention to to those things. Yeah, if you are a new player and you've heard that ding, that's what it means. Is the uh, <laughs> the phase is switching on you? So. <laughs> yeah, that's cool though. The the ding. I I, I want to like uh, maybe record some sounds from Tetris Effect and put them on my phone. Mm-hmm. And it's just like make my phone make that ding sound when something bad happens or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to just play a little quicker because I've been mostly kind of toying around. But uh, I was able to kind of get a zone quickly. And I assume this will kind of put devastating damage on you. Oh, uh, 19. Almost a 20. You get 20. Oh, so, so close. There is a little bit of RNG. Uh, that's, yeah. that's my excuse, at least at the top to, uh, you know, um, depending on how you're building, you want a high left and right will help you out. But 
with those center solves, there is a little, little bit of RNG. Typically, you can get a 20, though. I mean, you can, um, if you want to go for something like that, is there a, uh, a piece you could put in the hold chamber that's more useful for doing curb? Um, I, I would say LJ are pretty good. Uh, S and Z mm-hmm. can be a little tricky unless you, like, have a spawn situation for them, but it, it varies. You, it, it's kind of unique to each situation. Um, I prefer, like, LJ square solves and maybe a long bar. But uh, you can also do SEs with uh, to fill out two rows, depending on certain like on the left and right, the center there. So, uh, okay. yeah, there's multiple ways to go about it. Okay, I think that's enough of watching me play against this computer here. We're gonna move on <laughs> to other things. Uh, our okay. first match will be starting shortly. Bubbles versus Yoshimi. Get ready to play. We'll uh, hop into that momentarily. Um, go with this. Uh, Oh, that's a good idea. So before before we cut off here, let's uh, discuss the idea of accepting garbage and garbage blocking, which I feel like is pretty important here to uh, right. the versus. It's actually a, a one of the key, you know, key things you need to watch for as a player. So the garbage and meter, also how zone <clears throat> how zone plays into it. You can use it to kind of stop time and uh, prepare a, co- a counter of your own. Right. So the term garbage, if we're going to get really rudimentary here or fundamental is uh it refers to an attack so when someone attacks you they send garbage to you the gray blocks that you see on the bottom is the garbage and uh so there are, there's going to be situations when you want to accept garbage and block garbage and you can do this by attacking at the exact same time so if i want to intentionally block garbage here um i'll kind of wait till i accept some garbage right which mm-hmm. the ai is not doing a good job of uh, attacking me right now, it seems like, but we'll, we'll give it a moment. <laughs> it's being very passive. There you go. Okay, Except there's a Tetris. Tetris. And a T-spin is worth just as much as a Tetris, yeah. and boom. So if you see that Equalize. that uh, yeah. on the left side of the the board, there's like a vertical bar that appears. Right. That's That indicates how much garbage is going to be sent. So this will block some of it, right? Um, this is a great like tool in surviving in modern Tetris, is knowing when to block and when to accept garbage. Accepting garbage is a uh, more of an off- offensive tool, actually. If you want to accept to uh, try to like accept this clean mm-hmm. well, for example, to score Tetris, or if my opponent is in trouble, I will accept garbage because that means they cannot block my upcoming attack. So mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of ways that you can uh, kind of work with with that. And I, I do think that's one of uh, that's a very important skill in um, modern Tetris, and something if you are getting into it, should definitely look out. For to improve on. Some very skilled players, it'll be kind of fun to watch because they'll be going at the speed of light, right? And then for a brief moment, everyone just stops because they don't want to send each other garbage. <laughs> it's uh, uh, fun to see that. Yeah. Yeah, we might I mean, we might see that today and hopefully we'll be mm-hmm. keen enough to call it out when it happens. Okay, uh, with that, I think that's enough to uh, cover here. Uh, we'll definitely get into more fundamentals uh, throughout the day, and things mm-hmm. will you know, spruce up. So, For uh, sure, yeah. No, great demo. Yeah. Um, we could watch the... me for another seven hours if you like. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else wants that <laughs> as the uh, sponsored content. 